Have you ever seen a beautiful horse next to a lake or a stream? Are the fae looking to take another victim down to the watery depths? How true are the ancient myths of the water horse from the Scottish moors? Today we test the believability of the Kelpies of the Highland. Welcome to Believing the Bazaar, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. That's right. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Tuesday. The, the sun is out. I'm off of work. The sky is clear. None of that's true. Although you are off work, but this is kind of work. On so, Tuesday, I'm off work. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you know what? The sun might be shining. I thought you meant when we're recording. I'm like, I've shoveled my driveway multiple times today. No, on t- who knows what's going to happen on Tuesday? Hopefully, it's a grand day. I heard it's supposed to be very nice. Anyway, so let's go back to the topic. Have you ever heard of a Kelpie before? Until I looked it up today, no. You've never heard of this? No. It sounds like... You know what it sounds like? It's Is it Scottish? Yeah, I said that, yeah. Well, yeah, I wasn't listening. It, sound, <laughs> it sounds like a, um, like a beanie baby. Like, you gotta collect your Kelpie. Here's my penguin Kelpie. Get here's, out of here. Here's yeah, my, it does. Here's my gopher Kelpie. It does, doesn't it? Watch out for the horse Kelpie. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch it. I feel like we've got several people who know what this is already. A Kelpie? Yeah. They're worth a lot on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to them. They never went up in value. So, before we go really deep into this, I do want to point out there is something called a Kappa. Do you know what a Kappa is? Isn't that um, Greek? The um, no, the the TV show with with a spitter and um, I want to know where you're going with this. I don't. A- ABC Family. It was I think oh, it was just called Kappa, Greek. Kappa Kappa, you gag or whatever. Yeah, it was the dude with the long hair. I yeah, don't remember. that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, a Kappa is a Japanese monster with a bowl on its head. That's a whole other episode. Has a bowl on his head. Yeah, getting holds... that haircut, that bowl haircut. <laughs> uh, it holds water in the bowl. You know, from the '90s, man. Okay, so but a kelpie is. What I said in the in the beginning, it's it's a horse creature. Let me let me read off my notes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because I want to be I want to be. Let me consult Wikipedia. Uh, a kelpie is a Scottish ho- Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, everything sounds weird. A kelpie is a shape shifting creature that lives in the Scottish Highlands, and it's from Celtic folklore. Now, I just want you to know this won't be the first time. This won't be the last time we go into the Scottish folklore, Celtic folklore. On this episode, I'd hope not. It's kind of all about the Kelpie. No, not on this episode. This isn't the last time we talk about the Kelpie, I promise. We're three minutes in. I mean in general, because I really like the Helder folk and the Celtic folklore and all that kind of stuff. It's not the same thing, but it's all really similar. I will say, I will say, you definitely like your non-American topics, and I appreciate you for that, because I, I feel like I stay... With, you know, within within the continent, and and you like to go to, like, England and Scotland and and other places that aren't that's it um are you okay hold on you did um you did Berkeley yeah and you did um the 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 vampire wasn't the US was it yeah it was it was just early U- United States oh that, I, I, mean, you, I think you've gone out more than I have actually yeah good for me <laughs> you should really try expanding your horizons Charlie <laughs> Say the last three have been like Kentucky, Ohio, and anyway. So let's let's go back to Scotland. Every decently sized body of water in Scotland has some kind of connection to a kelpie. That's because they're so common there. <laughs> yeah, it's a common kind of myth. All the decently sized ones, all those little puddles, well, you don't like, get a kelpie. I mean, like like anglers' Kel- pond. That's like. T- the size of my hand doesn't Kel- get a kelpie. A kelpie looks at that and goes, Puh. <laughs> Yeah. It's got to have a nice amount of water. And the Scottish Celtic, Celtic, is different from the Irish Celtic. And it's pronounced differently. So in Scottish Celtic, a cow peach or a cold patch. Did you say a cow peach? <laughs> it's cal, K-I-L, K-A-I-L, cal peach. Kale peach. Or cold patch means literally heifer or 
colt. You know what a colt is, right? Like a horse. Yeah, young horse. They just got Carson Wentz. Colt. <laughs> God. Always back to football. So Kelbys are a type of water spirit. And not like from Frozen 2, the water spirit. Like, not like a nice one. Terrible movie, by the way. I Fro- like Frozen 2. Frozen 1 was so much better. I'm such a Disney file. But no, these are fae. Uh, or fairies of the highland. High, and High fae, right? Isn't it? High fae? Yeah. Low fae. <laughs> Middle fae? Are we doing like a <laughs> high five thing? <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. Go ahead with your fae. So, you know, in just a side note really quick. You know, in like Greek mythology where you have a god and they and they mate with a human, you get a demigod? Yeah. See, I feel like your episodes, you know, when I was saying that your episodes are never in America, I think what I meant is they're always history episodes. You're like, oh, back in the day, everyone, you know, let me join you at the, the whiteboard. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I, I go down and I, I explore the roots of the myth and you're just like, this thing happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That but, is kind of something interesting, isn't it, though? Like, you typically do a lot more history stuff where I do more personal encounter stuff. We have... uh we have different styles. Yeah, which is good for y'all, I guess. A little mix. Anyway, so my point being with the god and demigod, a Kelpie, when they mate with a horse, you get something called a prodigy. <laughs> you get called <laughs> corners of the internet that you should not be going to. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you shouldn't go there. Because that's called, that's called porn. Bestiality. So they basically look like normal horses, except you can't drown them, which I don't know why you're... <laughs> <laughs> God. There's only that's like some that's some old age witch shit. That's like if you can drown the horse, <laughs> it's a regular horse. If you're having trouble drowning the horse, it might be a kelpie. Can you imagine? It's like okay, we gotta figure out whether or not this is a kelpie. Did you bring the kiddie pool? <laughs> Let's and, do it. And the offspring of the kelpie and horse, the progeny, it it has quote unquote shorter ears than a normal horse. So you have to have a kiddie pool and you have to have a ruler at all times when you're in Scotland. I think you'd want an offspring of a Kelpie. I'm just saying that that is a ridiculous stipulation to, f- to figure something out. You know what I mean? It's like vampires have their thing, witches have their thing, and it's like, yo, you gotta drown the horse, man. You, <laughs> you can lead a, drown him. You can lead a horse to water, but if, if you can't drown that bitch, that's a Kelpie. <laughs> it is a weird thing to be like, I tried to drown him and I couldn't. That would be a Kelpie. That's um, not Scottish. <laughs> So, like I said, the Kelpies are really infused in the Scottish kind of folklore. And the famous Scottish poet Robert Burns wrote a poem about Kelpies. And it goes like this. When does dissolve the snowy hoard, ain't float the jingled icy board, then the water Kelpies haunt the ford. By your direction, Ionite travelers are allured to their destruction. I found the rhyming pattern. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's from like the 1700s. Is he really famous? Where did he just say he was? Famous? I mean, it's like a. I have mean, you ever like, heard of him before? Yes, I have actually. Oh, sure, you have. <laughs> he ain't no Bobby uh, Bobby Frost. So now the way a Kelpie looks, it can be either white or it can be black. There's no in between. There's no gray. So brown horses are fine. If you see a brown horse, you're good. White or black, and they basically appear normal, like a normal horse, but their mane is always dripping wet, and it never dries. They don't really leave the area of the water as well, so. Said- deodorant sweaty ass horses <laughs> ew um and they're also strong right they're said to be like 10 times stronger than a normal horse could um, you could you imagine really quick standing underneath a horse and trying to put deodorant in his little armpit four times don't veterinarians like do stuff like that i don't know <laughs> i need to bring my horse to the vet it's stinky it needs deodorant <laughs> only degree please they're like wash it and you're like no deodorant i can't wash it it's a kelpie <laughs> It won't drown. Some things about the Kelpie, when they enter the water, when their tails specifically enter the water, there is a thunderous crack. And when they fully submerge, they make like these like death screams. Like, <laughs> I, I'm sorry that I can't take this seriously. So, okay, so when the butt hit the water, there's, <laughs> there's a whap. And then when it, when, when does it scream? It go- when it goes all the way under. <laughs> it's cold! It's cold! <laughs> Colin, yeah, probably So wait, it, it, once it's fully submerged, then above the water you, you hear the yell? Yeah. Wouldn't it get muffled underwater? I don't know, science. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> who Who was the person that observed this scenario? Like, who was waiting, like, hiding in a tree, watching a Kelpie take a bath and was, like, taking notes? Like, alright, the butt has hit the water. And there's a... Well, we're going to get to it in a minute. I'm 
so excited. But there's a survivor of a Kelpie attack. What? All right. Although it's from a long time ago, so. Is he in jail for trying to drown a horse? No, he's probably dead because it's been a long time. Okay. uh, But before I get there, some of their powers include, like, control of water. They can, like, wash stuff away, like, really powerful floods. And they can also walk on water, like Jesus. It's like that airbender, not airbender, it's the person from Air Avatar, the one that does the water with the hair and the braids. Oh, yeah, for sure. Guitar. Yeah, guitar. Yeah, that's, she's a Kelpie. We just solved it. <laughs> well, actually, oh, God, oh, no. What do Kelpies want? What do Kelpies want? It reminds me of that, like, 90s song, like, what a girl wants. What a girl needs? Yeah. What a girl wants. What a girl needs. <laughs> do they want um, Lucky Charms? Well, they Is want... that Irish? Irish. That's Irish. Irish. You need to apologize to the Irish community. I apologize, Irish community. So this, they're said to want either human companionship or to eat humans or both. <laughs> <laughs> or for people not to try to drown them. So either human companionship or food. Those are like the two, like, mm-hmm. they look at somebody like, mm, is that friend or is that food? <laughs> I mean, that's how some people look at pigs. That's true. That's how you we look at pigs. Are, we are pigs to a Kelpie. Kelpie. Yeah. So some other stuff about them. They have this enchanting aura. And when you see this beautiful horse, it kind of charms you into wanting to approach it or follow it. And they usually appear to people who are tired, people who have been traveling, people that really need to go to bed. Okay. Really that, is, that has happened to be easy, near water. Easy prey. You know, well, it's Scotland. There's lots of like locks and not stuff like that around. Oh, look at that soggy horse. I really <laughs> want to go pet it. Ooh, it's wet. What if you took a blow dryer to a horse, a kelpie? It still, it would just, just wouldn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't dry? Really, no, it'd just be wet. And when a human actually is, is foolish enough to touch the kelpie, when they touch them, they actually become, they get stuck. They get stuck on the skin of the kelpie. And when the kelpie has someone stuck to them, they take off and they go as fast as they can to their water source and they drown their victim. <laughs> they say, who's the kelpie now? <laughs> Not you, because you dead. So, hmm. so, so if they're eating. What a, if they, but what if they wanted to be a friend? Then they live with them underwater. Really? Yeah, they don't get to live. Well, so we develop lungs that can now. No, no, no. They die. The human dies. So they don't know. <laughs> if they don't know if they're hoarding bodies, is what they mean, or if they're just eating them. I just they're just like me with plants. They just can't keep them alive. Like this is my fifth friend this week. They just keep dying. I have a. Pl- I had a plant on my porch named Barbara, and she did a very. <laughs> good job of lasting throughout summer she's still on my porch <laughs> i am the kelpie to barbara yeah you're I, keeping her just, corpse if you're here for history and analogies we got you covered this episode we're like arby's we got the meats <laughs> so if they do eat humans which i mean i'm i'm going to assume they do that's what i think they do want. they have normal horse teeth that are flat like no they have f-ing, uh Wait, chompers they got chompers they got lawn tooths uh like can, can are, are we talking about lay before time now? <laughs> what? They got carnivorous teeth, like pointed ones. Okay. Like T-Rex That teeth. might be another way to know if it's a horse or if it's a Kelpie. Well, what Instead do you do, of like... drowning it, when it when goes, nay, if it looks like, like a ferocious... You, you like pull up its mouth, you're like, let me see what kind of teeth you got. Well, when you're putting deodorant on it and you tickle it in its armpit and it goes, hey, and you look at its mouth, if it's sharp, it's probably a Kelpie. So when they do eat the human, they actually don't finish the human because they take the the entrails and they spit them along the line of the lake. That's f- gross. So they do. They don't eat the gross parts. <laughs> They're like, Ugh. They don't eat the organ meat. Yeah, only kosher. What was Kelpo? Is that SpongeBob? The cereal Kelpo? Like, imagine a box. I wouldn't imagine I think it would it's, be anything other than. SpongeBob. I think it's that's. I think that's another thing that this makes me think of is Kelpo. It's got to be. Listen, I might be almost a 30-year-old man talking about SpongeBob, <laughs> but when it came out, I was seven years old. So okay. it's been around. So you know how I mentioned that they're shape-shifting monsters, not just horse monsters? Yeah. So they're shape-shifting monsters because they can also shift into humans. Like only a... They can only be a white or a black human. <laughs> <laughs> So it can be like a strong lord or like a young boy or like a trustworthy woman or a beautiful maid. And when they're like a, a beautiful maid, they're like typically naked because they're trying to lure you into the water with them. Okay. And then when they are a human, they they usually have some kind of water plant in their hair. Kelp. Kel- well, cat. I didn't want to just say kelp, but yeah. <laughs> Listen, if I got killed by Kelpie because they looked like a woman or a dude, I just want Whatever Kelpie that kills me to know that I died thinking they were a mermaid. <laughs> they, I like it's, it's. Is that a little insulting that it's like you kill something and then it's dying 
thoughts. They mistook what you were. It's a little bit of a low blow. You know what I mean? You, you're this high and mighty. I'm killing you. And it's like, you goddamn mermaid. And it's like, <laughs> I'm a Kelpie, but I'm already dead. And it's kind of like, I wonder if it takes away from the kill a little bit. I'm just That's saying, funny. I would think it was a mermaid or a merman. Right. That makes sense. So, you know how I mentioned the survivor? We're going to get to that right now. Okay. All right. So. But he's dead now. It's a, he's, little, it's he's, a little ironic. Well, he's very old. Uh, this happened in like the before. The before time. <laughs> <laughs> so, the early. Like like early eighties. Like, oh, eighties. <laughs> so like the early eighties. No, no, like this dude could still be alive, man. <laughs> no, like like eight hundred. Not be wearing checkered shirts anymore. But... Like six hundred, eight hundred. There's a story about a chief's young son of a clan in Scotland, and him and his friends were out in the Highland Moors. They happened to come across what they found out was a kelpie. They didn't realize what they were petting, and they eventually jumped on. What happened when they all got on the horse, the kelpie started to take off like a kelpie does and starts to run. But this Scottish boy, the the chief's son, he manages to cut off all of his fingers and he gets off the kelpie, but he sees his friends laughing, having a good time, as they go into the water and drown. And then they weren't laughing anymore. Yeah, no, they they stopped laughing. Is he the one that heard the screams when they went under? Yeah. And he's like, that's what they do. <laughs> and when that booty whacked against the water, he was like, oh, that's what they also do. Thunderclap. <laughs> oh, so what? Did, uh, how did he cut his fingers off? I don't know how he cut them all off. I, like, I get how he did one hand, but when it came to the other hand, I don't know how he got them all off. Well, assuming he's holding on to it like a normal person would hold on to a horse and not like a rodeo, both of the hands would have been on. The horse. Mm-hmm. So did he use his mouth? Uh, maybe only one was on. I don't listen. There are some holes to this story. It's a giant black hole. I don't know how he got his fingers off. I'm gonna assume he just popped them off. I'm gonna assume it's because it didn't happen. <laughs> Dude, this <laughs> happened like 1800 years ago, 1200 years maybe ago. Maybe the story got twisted. He only got part of his hands off. Dude, okay, so this wasn't written down. If this is a true story, think of how many generations told the story to their next generation to the next generation. How many times could this be twisted? Telephone. It went from like, yeah, your uncle was riding a horse, but he was drunk and he fell off and his friends got into a horse crash and died. (laughs) And, and, And now we're saying he cut his fingers off and it was a Kelpie. A horse crash. There's no cars that do. They had a <laughs> so funny. They had a horse personal injury attorneys. Yeah, back then. Did it? Did it? Did you get injured on a horse? Did you cut off all your fingers? <laughs> you can't call us because there's not phones yet. Oh no! But we will take your money. Okay, so a kelpie obviously can be very dangerous, but it can be tamed if you get something called its bridle, which I, I think is like a saddle. The McGregor clan of Scotland. Of course, it's McGregor. Is still said to have a bridle of a kelpie. The House of Murphy is its castle in Scotland. Is said to be built by the power of a kelpie. So, like they transformed into a human, they made them build the house or the the castle. And even though you can wield the kelpie this way, it's said to be very dangerous because it actually ends up cursing your clan. McGregor clan seems to be doing fine, but I assume they're cursed. Why do you assume they're cursed? Because they're supposed to be. <laughs> That's oh. the myth. That's the rumor. Oh, it's like, we don't know how, and we have no examples, but, you know, sounds about right. <laughs> they did not go into detail about the curse. So, it is a saddle, though? It's just like... It, yeah. Imagine that awkward transformation moment when you put the saddle on it, and you're riding it, and then it turns into a human. It's <laughs> like, all right, this is really awkward, so I'll make you a deal. We'll never talk about it again, and you build us a castle. <laughs> deal? Deal. Okay, so, this is something you actually sent me. I really liked it. Oh, I get credit. Yeah. On yeah. the podcast. Uh, you do. Um, it's called How to Encounter a Kelpie. I thought it was, it was very cool. So, what if I wrote that page and I published it and I made you think it was like good research, but it's just me? Man, even if you wrote it, it's pretty neat. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. Did you write <laughs> it? Now <laughs> no. I'm questioning. Did you I, write No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I did not write it. I wish I did, but I didn't. All right. So according to this author, and this person, I assume, works for this company in theory. Reddit? He posted on, no, not Reddit, the company he mentions in the story. Oh. But he posted on Reddit how to encounter a Kelpie. So you ready? Yes. One, you must be alone. Kelpies don't like dealing with more than one victim at a time. As such, your best chance is to see one in a more secluded body of water. Loch Ness Kelpies rarely ever appear due to the amount of tourists around. Unless it's in the early 80s. Then when you're with your bros, they're going to come for your fingers. 
Two, Kelpies cannot touch you unless a certain condition is met. More on that later. Therefore, they rely on tricking the victim into touching them. Three, Kelpies don't often stray from their home, so to encounter one, you should be within roughly 500 meters of the water. If you encounter one further than this distance from a body of water, then leave. How far? 500 meters. This Contact. Is, you know how bad I am at this stuff? <laughs> like, who can just look and be like, it's about 500 meters? That's, uh... I think some people pretty, can, actually. I think some people have that ability, that's too. That's pretty far. I'm not good at that. I'm good with time. And by good with time, I'm good at knowing what time it is. I'm late for everything. I am late for everything, but I know I'm late. I, I'm good with guessing time. <laughs> anyway, if you do if you do see one this far, make sure you contact HGK477. Who will arrange for the extermination to kill it? I feel like they got binoculars then. They're like zooming in on this thing. Like, yep, it's got them sharp teeth. (laughs) Because if you see one that far, they are powerful beyond imagination. So is it like an exterminator van comes driving out to the river? It's like, we're going to drown this son of a bitch. I assume a helicopter. I'm not sure. <laughs> Imagine like a helicopter, like a machine gun. And then the, <laughs> like the horse looks up and it's like, it pulls out its own Uzis and just lifts it to the sky. And then there's like this firefight between a helicopter and the Kelpie. No. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Kelpies will most likely reveal itself to you in the form of a beautiful stallion. Some have a very interesting appearance. Once I encountered one with a snake mane. Like its mane was made of stinks. A salian? <laughs> you said a beautiful... Stallion. Stallion. It's not like salian. Stallion. Like, it's that stallion. Ohio name. Stallion. <laughs> stallion. All right. So a horse. Yeah. Okay. Five. They will also sometimes disguise themselves as a beautiful human woman, although an experienced one will still keep the horse legs. <laughs> I would assume that a novice one would accidentally keep the horse legs. It's not a very good disguise. No, it's not inexperienced. The 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 young ones, the ones that are I not thought you good. said an experienced inexperienced. One. Oh, I thought you said an experienced no. one. Okay, um, well then that makes sense. We're on the same page. Yeah, them newbie. New, are they? So they're born a kelpie. I would assume so. Yeah, you don't get chained. Okay. Six. Once found, the kelpie will try to trick your mind. You will feel very inclined to stroke this horse or embrace the woman. Mm-hmm. Seven is in all f-ing caps. Do not touch them. As soon as they are physically contacted, made you cannot let go. They will drag you from their ho- to their home and drown you before eating you. If you're lucky, can this episode be called "Don't Touch the Horse"? <laughs> not even HGK four seven seven can help you once you've touched the kelpie, which is, I assume, this man's company or something. How bad is business? That <laughs> is like. <laughs> I, can we call this person, even if it's a prank? I just want to like. Do they do they put a phone number in this article? No, there's no number. It I says have, contact them. Just contact us, bro. Yeah. I would have 100% on this podcast called that phone number. That'd be you, cool. Would you have been willing to, yeah. play, to play the role of a Kelpie? Yeah. Like, I touched it. I didn't mean to, but I touched it. I can't help you. Sorry, Will bro. Will you come here and cut off my fingers? No. Sorry, not, bro. Well, not you, HPK. I, I know. They're, they're busy. Um, <laughs> Office hours only. We close at five. Eight, the Kelpie can move very quickly. And once you've beaten its allure, it'll still try to make you touch it somehow by making you trip into it or or getting very close to you. That's like crossing some boundaries there. Yes, yes it is. Number nine, if it feels uncomfortably close, stay still as long as you can. Ten, don't look at its eyes. They will enact a spell to trap you. I feel like that one should have been a little bit earlier. I like how yes. we're on 8 and 9 and 10. They're like, yeah, it's fast, and don't look at its eyeballs. How about putting that at, like, 2 or 3? 11, for your life's sake, remember number 7. Don't touch it. 12, you can always come prepared. Kelpies are allergic to wood from the rowan tree, and if you feel trapped, you can lash out with your rowan wood. Just don't touch it. However, this should be the last resort, because 13, if you attack the Kelpie with the rowan wood... Be ready to fight because now it can make contact with you and it will try its hardest. Once it has hold of you, Rowanwood will not work. 14. If you're lucky, you can escape while it's in its current form. If it manages to transform back into the true sight of what it is, it will scar you for life. A horse. <laughs> I think they're implying. I've been to a farm, bro. I think they're implying that there's like another form that people don't see, which I don't know what it a is. A woman with horse legs. <laughs> 
Yeah, they'll, they'll f- you up. Fifteen. Remember that it's faster than you. Whoa, whoa. That's, that's yo. You don't know me. You don't know me. But if I'm Usain Bolt, what if I'm Tyreek Hill? I guess that's. I guess that's fair. Sixteen. I'm starting to not really believe this. This person. This is the last thing. There's okay. one more thing. Okay. Sixteen. There is a ninety-nine percent chance that Kelpies will not stray too far from their home. If you make it at least five hundred meters, they can't follow you. Attempting to defeat a Kelpie is a whole different can of worms that should not be attempted by untrained individuals. And if you have, and if you have survived this encounter, you are now eligible to train to become an exterminator of the British folk beasts and EBF. Is that real? Can we look that up? Can we do that? Can we go to training camp? I I don't know. I we can look up British folk beasts. All right, here's, here's what we gotta do. We gotta go to, to I almost said Bobby Flays. We gotta <laughs> go to Bobby Max, Bobby Mackey's, and then we're gonna go to Suicide Forest, and then we're gonna train so that we can catch kelpies. We're ke- we're kelpie catchers. Yeah. Leaving the bazaar. Hashtag kelpie catchers. So I have another story. I got this story from a clip on YouTube. I'm, I'm gonna summarize it because it's long. What if it was me? What if I'm the one that posted it and it was it was me? Are you I from Scotland? It. Yes. Okay, then maybe. So like I said, this clip is long. I'm going to post the whole thing on Facebook. But in summary, it's about this girl who turns 13. She lives in the in the country, her mother and her grandmother. It's about to be her 13th birthday. She she all she wants to do is read even though she used to have like this horse phase. She wants to read her books and she likes to read outside near the stream, of course. And while she's reading the day before her birthday, she hears a an uh, a neigh, say the a neigh, and she goes exploring and she stumbles upon this beautiful white horse and she's about to go touch it and she hears her mom call her name. So she's like, what? That's weird. And then she leaves and she goes back to her house and she tells her grandmother and her mother about the horse she saw and they're like, that's, I'd avoid that. That's what they say. And she's like, what? That's weird. No. So the next day she goes out to read again on her birthday and it's very nice. And she's reading, she hears her name being whispered. And while she looks up, she sees this 20-year-old girl peering behind a tree. And she goes, hey, I know your dad. He wanted you to have this birthday present. And she's like, that's that's weird. But she follows anyway. And she stumbles upon the same place she saw the horse yesterday. And the same horse is there, the same white horse. And she goes up and she actually touches this horse. And she realizes that she's stuck. And while she's, like, trying to get out of the grip of the Kelpie, she hears a gunshot. And then the woman falls over dead and transforms into a black Kelpie. The grandmother says, hey, don't move. And she shoots the girl's hand. (laughs) And the Kelpie shrinks into the river and washes away. And the girl has a bullet in her hand. And they say, hey, your father died the very similar way. We didn't really believe that he died that way. But now we see that there's proof. We're going to move. And they move to the city. Did she at least break a nail? <laughs> Are you telling me she caught the bullet in her hand? It like went through her hand. You, does she she don't got a hand. If if it was a shotgun, <laughs> no, it was like a pistol. Oh well, in that case, she's probably fine. <laughs> Some a couple stitches. I assumed it's pretty messed up. Too bad when she was doing all that reading, she didn't stumble on that Reddit thread, and, and she didn't contact the exterminator. No, she was reading like books or whatever. I'm the Kelpie exterminator. <laughs> all I, right, I don't give you my phone number. So, these are some of the stories and the myths of the Kelpies. Would you like to discuss? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, that was the Kelpies. So, the, the water horse, the, the, the sticky water horse that takes you underneath it and drowns you. What do you think? No. Um, no. I think this, this has probably been two, two sides of a coin here. I think this has been the most unbelievable a story has ever been. And I'll have to go back. I feel like we've definitely had some unbelievable stories. There was one right off the bat I knew was unbelievable. But it, I'm not recalling it. doesn't matter. This one is incredibly unbelievable to me. But I must say this is one of the most fun times I've had recording. Now, I don't know if that's going to translate into a good episode. <laughs> but this was a lot of fun. Um, man, it was a lot of fun. Did you learn anything fun about the Kelpies? I learned a lot about the Kelpies. I didn't know anything about them. I, I might have actually thought they were viable until we did this episode. <laughs> uh, a lot changes in 38 minutes. <laughs> oh, man. I I had a lot of fun telling this story because I like Kelpies. I don't necessarily think 
you know, they're real. I feel like, okay, here's the problem for me. It's like surface level versus the more you know. In surface level, it's like shape-shifting creature that lures people in. Like, okay, like I can I can roll with that. And then I feel like every layer that you get deeper into the Kelpie, it's more unbelievable. <laughs> it's like the dude or the woman or the culture that made this up didn't know when to stop. Like, yeah, okay, but like, what if it makes a loud noise when it go? Okay, but then, but then they're like, they can either be white or black. Sometimes a girl, sometimes a guy. But if they don't know what they're doing, then they're gonna still have horse legs. And it's like, okay, but but what happens if somebody rides it? No, dude, you can't ride it. Why? Because you get stuck. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's like they should have stopped when they were ahead. It. I feel like it feels like one of those traditional stories. It's kind of like we talked about before, where it's. A warning sign to keep people from wandering or kids to wandering. To keep people from uh, walking, walking. Not like, like, do you not want your kids to drown in rivers? Tell them about the Kelpie. Yeah. Don't, also, also, don't ride strange horses. Yeah, the, the 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 woman in that that story. If they even had an inkling about what a Kelpie was, they absolutely should have been a little bit more. Oh, upfront. the girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, we thought sure. your father died that way. <laughs> oh, you mean the mother and the grandmother? Oh, yeah, they're, they just yeah, let her. But you will let you read. You know, you're reading. We don't want to deter you from reading. Can well, we... we get you like a boat. You can just be on the river. <laughs> oh, man. What's the most believable aspect of the story to you? The most believable aspect of the story to me is that I believe in the Fae of Ireland and Scotland. So, that being said, I think there might be some merit in a fairy water horse. I don't know if it does all that stuff it says it does. Maybe it could just be like riding around the highlands. But I overall, I do believe in the Fae. I'm just imagining a horse with like sharp teeth that can speak English. <laughs> hey, come here. Or like, okay, like imagine Kelpie getting together and training. Like, okay, it's like the... um. The, like the thing you see in movies where like one person pretends to like lay like gets on their hands and knees to trip the person. <laughs> it's like, all right, who's gonna be the table? Like the montage to trip them into me so that I can catch them. And I still didn't get a feeling for the friend factor. Like everything seems like foe. Like I'm gonna trick you and I'm gonna eat you and I'm gonna kill you. I'm I'm still like like the whole becoming a friend thing. I feel like I'm completely in the dark on that. I think it's not really being a friend. I think it's collecting. We are their beanie babies. Yes. Yeah. They collect us. Yeah. That's if they don't eat you, which I, if I think they'd probably just eat you. All right. So you're walking <laughs> around woods and you come up on a stream. You see hoof prints in the ground. And as you get closer to the river, You see something along the side of it, and you're not sure what it is, until you get almost in the water, and you see its intestines rip and just strewn about by the edge of the water, and then in the distance, you hear a very faint neigh. Oh my f***. That's actually very scary. That's actually a little creepy. That's actually very scary. Unbelievable. (laughs) I say skeptical. That's very kind of you. (laughs) Yes, it is. Thank you for listening to our episode about the Scottish Kelpie. If you feel the other way that we do, that like the 100% honest, like, or if you've even seen a Kelpie, you should write in and tell us you saw a Kelpie. Yes, please hit us up in our DMs. And tell us how you knew it was a Kelpie, not just a horse. And I want to know if you use the, the guide that's on Reddit to find it. And if you need binoculars, because I don't know what 500 meters is. But for real, if, if anybody truly, like if this is part of somebody's culture, like we, I mean, we have listeners in more than Ohio and Kentucky. So if, if, you know, if this is something that you grew up believing, if you had a personal experience with something like this, put us in our place, hit us up, let us know about it. And we'll, we'll put an asterisk on this and we'll come back out here in another Tuesday and we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. That'd be super fun. Anyway, if you're liking the show and you want to like, tell us you're liking the show, please leave a review on Apple podcast. Cause that helps us with like charting and like more people could see us organically and that would be really awesome it would mean very much we like reading them we like sending them to each other we like posting them in our instagram stories if you get excited every time charlie's voice cracks let us know (laughs) 
I know that someone's is, counting. Somebody out there is counting obsessively. Like they're just like like writing it in the wall. Like <laughs> that's four times today. But seriously, thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. A podcast as bizarre as you are. <laughs> <laughs>